live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Public Sector Summit here in Washington, D.C. It's the 10th annual AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We're joined by Adelaide O'Brien. She is Research Director, Government Digital Transformation Strategies at IDC Government Insights. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Adelaide. Thank you, Rebecca, for having me. It's, I'm pleased to be here today. So I want to just start, really, with, with just picking your brain about, about the, the topic of this conference, which is about modernization of government IT. What is the state of play? How, how, where, do you, where do you see things from where you sit? Well, as you know, the, the federal government right now has been under about a 10-year directive to, to go cloud first. And what we've seen is, you know, a lot of agencies, not all, but some of them have struggled with that. Uh, and it hasn't really had the momentum or the velocity that as an analyst I'd, I'd like to see. And uh, so last year, the current federal CIO, Suzette Kent, put out a policy, and it was about actually moving to cloud smart. So it wasn't just to do cloud to, to be more efficient, uh, to save some of that uh, money, that about 75 billion that's spent on maintaining uh, legacy equipment, but it was actually thinking about using cloud to be very, very agile, um, to help deliver better citizen services. And, and it, what's interesting is this, this whole the whole concept of Cloud Smart is also very supportive of uh, the uh, IT Modernization Technology Act as well as the report to the president on IT modernization. So last year we saw both executive and legislative support uh, for agencies to move to cloud. So as you said, it, it does, but it's still, from where you sit as an analyst, it still doesn't quite have the momentum and the velocity that you'd like to see. What do you see as the biggest obstacles? Well, and, and this was actually identified in Cloud Smart, and uh, yesterday and today, I heard a lot of agencies talking about these three aspects, and I think you know AWS is in a great place to help them. So, uh, one of the first is security, and, and we know when agencies you know were first asked to go to the cloud, security was you know the biggest barrier in their organization to cloud, and and so I think it was the third uh, AWS conference. It was actually in this building, and, and I know there's been ten but I wasn't at the first two. And I can remember as an analyst, I was so pleased that Teresa had Roger Baker, the CIO of Health and Human Services on stage, and they were talking about uh, getting FedRAMP certification, and I think it was one of the first. And it was, it was thrilling that such a large agency had invested so much time and money uh, in working with AWS to get FedRAMP certification. So, to me, that that was like you know an initial push and a start. So, security is, is just so so important. And now you've got you know so many different uh, software providers working with Amazon, AWS on security. Um, um, and uh, even today at, at one of the breakout sessions, um, uh, the Census Bureau talked about because the CIA moved to AWS and they put their most sensitive information in the cloud, they felt comfortable with putting the personally identifiable information in the cloud, i.e. our census data information. Yeah, if it's good enough for, the, for that kind exactly. of information, I can, I can put my business exactly. information there too. Exactly, exactly. So the question I want to get in the, on, the, on the research side is competition of opportunities is old, we about old guard. Amazon always said old guard, the old way of doing things. They're pretty much in the new class, DevOps. We've seen that on the enterprise side. Certainly startups, Andy Jassy used examples like Airbnb. You see those at conferences over the years. Look at the example of these cloud native companies. How does government now look at suppliers as partners? Because the big debate is you pick the right cloud for the right workload, Workload should define cloud architecture. Not, you can't just split clouds up amongst Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Oracles of the world. The whole well, multi-vendor equation shifts in this new paradigm. How do you see that playing out? Um, yes, it does. But I also see, and, and I, what I've heard today over the last two days is, you know, agencies are actually looking for a partner who can grow with them and learn with them. And I heard that over and over again. Um, you know, they want a cloud provider that, you know, has skin in the game and that actually helps them. And, and, and we've seen that. They also want a cloud provider that's innovative. And, you know, one of my concerns is I learned about how 
how, you know, scale, everything's about scale today, right? And how Amazon now has, AWS has scaled up so fast over the last couple of years and all the innovations that, that they're able to provide. And so the question is how can you keep that culture alive and, and it, you know, it's kind of like that startup culture at AWS, right? How can you keep that alive? And you know, I think Andy answered it today. And and you know, I, I wish I would have thought about the question in the way he talked about it. You know, when you get big, you get conservative, right? Because you have too much to lose and too much is at stake. And you know, as an analyst, I'm seeing AWS not only is it growing fantastically, but it's innovating. And I think that's what gives you then this innovation, the, you know, the, you don't have to be a, a Silicon Valley software company to innovate. And I think part of it comes from, uh, I think Teresa said that 95% of AWS's roadmap is based upon what they hear from their customers. So, you know, that, that ear to the ground, uh, knowing the, the government business, federal, state, and local is so, so so important. And this trend that's helping them too also is the move to SaaS with capabilities on digital using software as a service. Business yes. model, so again, it's all kind of timed up beautifully for these agencies that were slow to move in the past. This is a well, and, catalyst and so, or? Yeah, so, so security is one of the things on, on Cloud Smart, and I think that was one of the biggest, um, you know, biggest uh, uh, barriers to momentum. Um, but the other is acquisition. So there's three things about Cloud Smart that agencies are to pay attention to. And I think, you know, what's really helped in the acquisition is, you know, the standardization and not only the FedRAMP certification, and, you know, AWS is helping cloud providers, software as a service providers, get FedRAMP certification. And so, and this was announced at the conference last year, but ATO on AWS, right? Because it's an arduous process. If you don't know what you're doing, it can cost you a lot of money and take a lot of time. So, you know, AWS is working with its partners, and that's all good for the government sector, right? Because the more vendors that go through certification, the more they trust them and the more they can trust you know, the integrity of their data in the cloud. So the acquisition is the second one, but the third one is the workforce. And I, and I think you know, Andy mentioned it today, you know, a lot of the resistance and a lot of the inertia to cloud is not just the technology, it's training the workforce. And I, you know, that is so, so important because it's not just an IT conversation any longer. Going to cloud is part of digital transformation, it's the foundation of it. And and, and so that has to be a conversation with all levels of agency executives. And, and they have to agree, otherwise, you know, if you're innovating, you've got you know, islands of innovation. And you, on the cloud, you can start to, yes, you can pilot, but you can start to really get scale there and, and, and transform your whole business. And, and it's all about serving citizens better and innovating to serve them better and automating your processes. You know, that's so important as well. So how would you describe the workforce? I mean, when you think about the private sector workforce in, in terms of cloud computing versus the government, you tend to think one is more bureaucratic, there is obviously more red tape, maybe slower moving. Um, how, what are you seeing, what are you hearing? Well, you know, at all levels of the workforce, and especially in government, there, there's a big push now to automate everything. And, you know, the government at all levels, federal, state, and local, realizes they're actually competing with the private sector for, for workforce. And so, you know, historically government would say, well, what's the next skill? And we better start preparing for that, right? What's, what, what's coming down the pike and we, we need? And now it's like, how do we prepare for people who will enter government and move in various different jobs and move in and out of government. And, and so when you think about that, that's a skill development. And, and technology can help with that, but it's also a mindset of accepting the fact that people join government to serve and they might leave and come back. And, and, and so that's very important. But also the, in terms of cloud smart, the workforce has to, to be able to understand cloud and how to work with vendors. You know, and it's not necessarily you know, owning your your own equipment, but it's, it's, it's trusting your vendors and, and trusting them with your business. And, and how do you, you know, provide these solutions to the line of business folks? And in a way, 
I've actually seen you know, the IT department become much more, say, responsive to the line of business folks. And, and my advice to, to government executives, and especially the IT folks, is always think of yourself as a service, right? Think of yourself as a service, you know, that as a service, you know, to the line of business folks. And, and you know, help them understand what, what they need, how they accomplish their mission. Maybe give them a short list of solutions to help them out. Um, but, but really start tracking then, you know, what they're accomplishing. And, and that'll help fuel then your reinvestments, help you know where to spend your money next, and, and really, you know, just fuel this whole mission accomplishment. One of the things that we've been talking a lot about on theCUBE for, for years is the, the new role of the chief data officer uh, in, in organizations. A lot of federal agencies are now also putting in their own chief data officers. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen and, and how they're being used? Yeah, so there are chief data officers in the organizations, and again, that's one of those skills where you know, government's going to compete with the private sector for them, and there's probably not enough to go around. Um, and, and so it's a very precious commodity. And you know, it's, especially like in your research organizations, you've got chief data officers there. But in, in a lot of the other areas, and you know, especially in the civilian government, you may not be able to have your own you know, chief data officer, right? You certainly have all the data, but you may not have someone like that. And that's where, you know, some of the things that, that, I, that, that I'm advising agencies to look for is who can help you then give you some of these, you know, big data and, you know, AI and ML solutions that your line of business folks can start to interface and work with. And, and maybe you have chief data officers set up the data fields initially, um, but that's where you've got to start to democratize, you know, AI and ML, and, and, and because you're never going to have enough chief data officers in any one organization to possibly comb through all of that data. Um, and so that's again where technology can help. Great, well Adelaide, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been a thank pleasure you. having you. It was great being here, thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Stay tuned, we will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit.